Nicole's got from Mobile Geeks, and today I'm going to be taking a closer look at the apps that I've been using to help me move over from Android onto Windows Phone. Now, there is a pretty big divide between where Google has gone with Android and the update within Jelly Bean and KitKat coming out this week, and what Microsoft has done with their Windows Phone update and even their Windows Phone 3 update that came out this week. So there is a pretty big divide. Android is clearly ahead. It's a way more sophisticated operating system, but if you dig deep enough in the Windows Phone uh, store, then you will find that there are apps that can help you bridge this divide because Windows Phone doesn't have things like toggling, doesn't have things like file manager, it doesn't have a lot of, uh, well, it doesn't have all the latest and new apps. There's a huge delay in like the guys from Instagram creating an Instagram app. But there are some application developers out there that have made some really solid apps that will help you bridge the divides. So it's been several weeks back on Windows Phone and now I have everything set up just the way that I like it and I've found most of the apps that have made the transition from Android to Windows Phone a lot easier. So the first thing I'm going to start out with is Phonely, which is the version of Feedly. So if you're looking for an RSS reader, uh, Feedly was the best on the market and now we have it here on Windows Phone with Phonely. So it's, it has a very similar setup to what we have um, on Android. So you can see that you also have your categories. You can save for later. And uh, the other one that I could not get along with was G Maps. So I did pay the $1.99 for the pro version, and it's because it includes things like, like Street View. So it's very similar to what we have uh, on Android. And this even has HD Street View, right? So it is exactly what you remember from Google Maps, minus a couple of things. But I mean, all in all, it's a pretty good uh, second. Now, Facebook beta, so this is the best one. Uh, I tried a few of the others, and the problem with the others is, is that it screws up your timeline. So if you want to upload some photos, you can select multiple photos to go to one album. So it's not as if you're uploading single uh, photos to your timeline, like if you're using uh, the the native, the native check-in, like over here. Oh, actually, no. Through, let's just say, if we went to photos, camera roll, and we picked this one, and then I select, you know, share, right? So we can send to all of these different ones, but let's just say I wanted to select these ones to share. If I, did, if I did it that way, it would put individual photos on my timeline. But if you do it through Facebook beta, then it will go into one album, which is much, much better for what your timeline looks like. And you can also do things like, like individual um, comments, which is not possible on the others. So if we just go onto my timeline here, so let's just pull up a comment and then I can like it. So versus over here on your notifications, and then we have this, and then you have everyone's comments, but you can't actually like them. So you need Facebook beta to do that. So the email application within Windows is one of the best around on mobile. I've, I've honestly, I've really liked it. You can select and unselect different ones. Uh, if you say open up an email, when you tilt it over, the way that they, they've used the white space, the way that the icons rotate back and forth, if we hit reply, the keyboard here is one of the best around in terms of responsiveness, but the problem is I like swipe. So I like to be able to drag and drop my finger through the words and type really quickly. Uh, the BlackBerry Z10 also has one of the best keyboards around for touch typing. So they're dropping the ball a little bit by not allowing third-party keyboards on here. So that's something that we're never really going to see fixed. But overall, the email application is fabulous. Now, I do like my, my weather, and the Weather Channel app I find is quite good. Uh, until my bike got stolen two weeks ago. I was riding my bike to work all the time. Now I'm taking the MRT. But what I liked about this one is that when you pulled it up, 
it had the hourly forecast details and then it would tell you uh, the chances of raining. Since I can kind of flex what time I ride my bike to or from the office, uh, I can avoid the rain. So I like it that it has the precipitation per hour. The translator application on Windows is one of the best around. It has the camera so you can, right, so you can actually put text down here and then it'll auto translate that out, but you've all seen that before in the past. So this is my G2 by LG. I totally love it, but I'm just going to show you what I mean, right? So we have this up here. So we have the notification bar and we have all of this stuff. So I can access right from this little toggle screen that I can turn on and off the Wi-Fi. Everything's right there. Windows doesn't have that. So what you do have to do is you have to find applications that provide you with the best solution for your needs. Now, for me, instead of going into settings, okay, the, the long way is I always make sure that I have my settings front and center on the home screen. Then I would go into settings, and then I would click Wi-Fi, and then I would go this way. But you, what you can do is you can get this connected app, and then all of your uh, connectivity shortcuts are right here. So they're just one click, right? Oh, sorry, wrong one. Huh. One click away, right? So Wi-Fi enabled on and off. That's much quicker. So that is connectivity shortcuts. So that's a really, really, really great one. Games, they tuck away. So all of the games that you've downloaded. Now, I have a confession to make. I have become addicted to a tower defense game called, oh, it doesn't go into landscape just yet. Here we go called Demon Defense. I'm 100% addicted to this game. I totally love it. Now I'm gonna go to the level that I haven't passed yet. So you can get all of these guys. You need to have points. Then it shows you what they are. Say next, next. Okay, I haven't even passed this one on easy. It's really good. So you can see that the graphics are really great. You can kind of speed things up. You can choose to shoot other things, right? So it's just a really good tower defense game. I'm quite a big fan of it. Audio Cloud is my SoundCloud application. I'm 100% addicted to SoundCloud. Uh, Spotify is also available on Windows Phone if you're addicted to that too. So all of my sounds are right there. I've disabled the push notification to whenever there's a brand new one, but you can have that too. So, and if it was bigger, you can do, it would auto-update. Uh, currency converter, travel a lot, had to put that on there. Calendar, it's a really good calendar app. Right, nice, clean, syncs with my Gmail, everything, no problem. Seven minute workout, this is the scientific seven minute workout. So it's a good app, 15 seconds to start, seven and a half minutes. Google search, right? So I know it's not Google now, this is gonna be one of the major drawbacks is that we don't have uh, the context-aware search that is within Google now. The closest that we're going to get for context-aware, and I know that this is not um, close enough. So it's a augmented reality app that loads up and shows you the locations of all the things that are around you. So you can see here, if we tilt it around, um, it'll actually show you where the restaurants are directly around me. So that's really the closest that you're going to get for context-aware applications. But let's just go uh, into the apps that I don't use all the time. Six Tag is an Instagram uh, app, so it will upload all your stuff to Instagram. I'm not, I'm not an Instagram user, so I can't really go through that app for you, nor do I have the desire. <laughs> Baconit is a Reddit reader. Box Files for Dropbox, always a really good one. Uh, Crackle doesn't work here in Taiwan for me, but this is a streaming TV app. So it will do featured content from uh, US and Europe. So you'll be, you'll be able to watch different series and shows. So Facebook beta, I told you before, this is the best one for Facebook. It does the album uploader, uh, which is mandatory because otherwise it screws up timeline and looks really gross. Foursquare, uh, the app's greatly improved from two years ago when it was first implemented on here. So you can see I can creep on all of my friends there. I just checked into the park recently. Uh, there's my badges, right? So what else? What else we got? 
that has helped me make the transition over from Windows. Like I said, Gmail Pro. Oh, how did I miss this? So Google Plus is the one thing that I'm having a really hard time adopting when it comes to Windows Phone. So I did find some apps. So it does give you the app-like things. So in the morning or whenever it is on my phone, I can, I can read uh, the various Google Plus posts. Um, you see at the top, I can see what my notifications are, uh, who's been interacting with me. I can choose all of the circles that I have, profile photos, notifications. Now, the one crappy thing is that I have not been able to share photos. Actually, let's just go home. Right. So for some reason, for whatever reason, I can't get any photos to upload through the browser. It's just terrible. So what you can do is you can go into albums. This is the auto backup for my Google devices, so I can share from there. But what you can do is you can upload from your SkyDrive to Google. Now, how you do that is a pain in the butt, but I'll show you an option around here. So let's just head down to, I'll use Picasa. So I'm going to use Picasa. I have the SkyDrive photos. So I select the album and then I choose upload. Here's some photos. Here's some stuff from Shenzhen. There's the nice Binetone guy. So I'm going to add that in. And then once it's uploaded through here, you can head back into your Google Plus app. Click on the SkyDrive folder, and then you can say Add to Post. It's a pain in the butt. It's not easy, but you can share photos from the handset exclusively. If you save them all to SkyDrive, so what, what, what I've done, and this isn't my favorite solution, but what I've done is I've put everything in here, and then I have my settings. Then I have my SkyDrive turned on. I have everything best quality over Wi-Fi. I'm not saving all the videos. And then I share from my desktop computer. It sucks because I don't always remember to go back and the live sharing directly from my mobile right where I am instantaneously, it's missing now. So if you are a huge Google Plus user, this is gonna be one drawback. If you haven't adopted Google Plus, then I'm rambling on for no apparent reason and you don't really care. <laughs> But let's just keep on going over a couple of the other apps. Uh, Bill Splitter, I think I already mentioned that. Now, here Drive and City Lens and here Maps, these don't work for me in Taiwan because, and I'll show you, right? Taiwan's a Chinese country. This is not called 12th Avenue, right? That's called Renai Road. So 100% useless to me because they've put numbers instead of names, right? So that's why I can't get on board with this one. But anyways, the US and Europe, those are some of the best map applications around. All right, City Lens, so Line, another good social network. I've been using MoTweets. Uh, Netflix is here. There's a lot of different uh, camera applications that you can use. Uh, OneNote's great, Phonely, I already mentioned that. Uh, Photosynth, so if you wanted to take a, like, you know, you know when, when you take the 360? Right, so here's the one that I tried to take. Uh, in Hong Kong the other day, right? It's not, it's not very clear. It's not the best one ever, but you see I kind of took the sky, missed a big chunk there, but there's the Hong Kong skyline, largely. So there is a um, 360 app available. It's called Photosynth. Okay. Photosynth. Ooh, head back. Runtastic. So many apps, or so, so many people are using that, so it's a good one. Uh, Shazam, if you're trying to figure out what music's being played. SkyDrive, like I mentioned, for backing up all my photos. Skype, don't even need to talk about that. Sleep well, I'm looking for a good sleep monitoring application. On Android, I am using, let me show you. I think Sleep as Android is the best one. I love it so much. Uh, this is my last night, so I'm a terrible sleeper, guys. 
and it was running forever, but like I'm a terrible sleeper. I wouldn't, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even get into it. All right, so anyways, I like to know how little sleep I'm getting even though I spend a lot of time in bed. <laughs> but sleep well actually overheated and drained the battery of my phone. So I have not found a good sleep monitoring app that works. Uh, stopwatch app, transfer your data. If you are just starting, this is a really good application for getting all of your data onto your other phone. I mean, obviously I just have everything synced with Google, so I don't really need to worry about actually transferring stuff over. UC browser, if there's another browser, Viber for making uh, voice over IP phone calls. Uh, the Weather Channel already went over that. Windows Phone Insider is a good little application for finding uh, new apps for your phones, for your ringtones, um, what's new, games. You can even do different different lock screens and stuff. What is it? App Highlights is another good app for finding other applications that are new. Right, so it does highlight a whole bunch of them. Right, you can even do staff picks and the starter kits for your Lumia, Lumia. So I mean, like Nokia's done a pretty good job of pulling together a lot of the stuff. So I, w I went over these, right? But they should do Facebook beta. It's way better than uh, the official Facebook app. So photosynthesis in here, Yelp, Netflix. I mean, a lot of this stuff I've gone over. So that's a good, oh, that's a Chinese one. Oh, Evernote. I did almost forget about Evernote. See, so this uh, app highlights, really great, really great little uh, application for helping you find new apps for Windows Phone. So that was my look on the apps that I'm using to help me move from Android over onto Windows Phone. Now, like I mentioned before, I'm using the front-facing camera of the Lumia 1020 to film this intro and this exit. So the park is a little bit windy, so if there's a little bit of noise, I do apologize in advance. But just to wrap up, I love the hardware that Nokia is making. It's much more durable than anything that we're finding in the Android or iOS world. Uh, the camera on the 1020 is killer. If you haven't seen it, I actually covered uh, the entire Hong Kong Fair, which is the world's largest electronic fair uh, in Hong Kong just uh, two days ago. I covered the entire thing with the 1020. Right, so it is a pro as, a, as a productivity device, as something for me to take video, uh, to stay connected on email. Uh, I obviously produced the video on my Ultrabook, uh, the Lenovo Yoga 2 Pro, but everything else for the day, uh, I was able to do on Windows Phone. Uh, the sharing to Google Plus is an issue, but like I said, if that's not your bag, then probably isn't gonna matter very much. But the one thing that I do wanna wrap up and say really quickly is that the applications that are available on Windows Phone, they're not always the highest caliber, but you do have a lot of gems in there. So when I talk to a lot of really great developers, most of them aren't willing to develop for Windows Phone yet. They're waiting for the ecosystem to grow. So my one statement to all of you developers out there is that people will pay for apps on Windows Phone right now if it's a good app. If you put a shit app in there, like in any other app store, it's not gonna sell. So if you take the time now to build a Windows Phone app, the possibility for monetization is much higher than the other two app stores. So please take the time to develop the apps. I would strongly suggest it. Um, and I'm kind of getting sick and tired of listening to developers bitch and complain about, oh, Windows Phone, it's so difficult to make apps for them. Oh, I wanna focus on an ecosystem that is, already being, that is already heavily monetized. But you know what, guys? Talk to an x86 developer from 10 years ago, then get back to me about different hardware, software, operating systems, and different variables to take into account when you're developing. I mean, the mobile developers today, you guys are all a whiny little bitches. I mean, I'm just getting really sick of it. Like, talk to an x86 developer and then get back to me on how difficult it is to develop for Windows Phone. So I still want the app, so don't be mad that I just screamed you out. <laughs> I'm gonna have a coffee, I probably need more of those. <laughs> Nicole Scott here from Mobile Geeks, uh, taking a look at Android to Windows Phone.